It's so much. I mean, <laughs> here's the thing. I, I think at a very basic level, thinking of Bitcoin as money for the internet is missing the point. Uh, Bitcoin is fantastic money for the internet. It's fluid. You can do transactions securely across borders, instantaneously, very cheaply. You know, th these are really amazing things. This is really money that can work beautifully mm -hmm. on the internet. But if you look at it as money of the internet, you're missing the big point. Uh, Bitcoin and the technology underneath it create a network, a global network that allows you to transmit value from A to B without any intermediaries. It's a peer-to-peer -peer value network. If you use it to transmit Bitcoin, it enables a currency. You could also transmit stocks, bonds, share certificates, hundreds of other currencies, tokens. You can use it to do allocation of scarce resources. You could use it to buy and sell bandwidth, buy and sell storage, buy and sell ideas, uh, pay for publishing, property. You can use it to do verifiable transactional contracts. You can use it to change commercial um, relationships and contracts. You can use it to do international trade. You can use it to do micropayments. It's one network that goes all the way from nanopayments to gigapayments in a single network. Um, and it enables essentially... At the same price. At the same price. And it enables um, programmable money for the first time. Automation and smart money. programmable money, smart money. And it does this by creating the internet of money. This is the internet of money. It's not just money for the internet. And once you realize that you can build applications on top of this, and currency, the Bitcoin currency, is just the first application. It's like email on the internet. It's good enough to change the world and have everyone adopt the internet. But it was just the beginning. But you don't even imagine what comes next. The World Wide Twitter, Web. Facebook, the World Wide Web. We haven't even built those things yet. Yeah. Some of the people here are building them. Contract systems and platforms based on things like Ethereum, uh, multiple currencies that can be built on top of Bitcoin. Systems for a decentralized exchange of value where you can transfer from one currency to another. Programmable money is, is really interesting. Let me give you just one example, which I think your, your uh, audience will like very much. And this is the concept of a distributed autonomous corporation. At the moment, every payment system in the world, every currency system in the world is, requires uh, that the ownership of money is associated with personhood. That means that money can be controlled either by human beings, persons, or the, the constructs built through association, uh, artificial personhood or corporations, um, that can manage money on behalf of shareholders or behalf of individuals through institutional controls. Mm -hmm. The one thing you can't do is you can't have autonomous systems manage money. Uh, they have to be attached to a person. Bitcoin doesn't see personhood. It's not designed to go around personhood. It simply doesn't see personhood. It doesn't see people any more than it sees borders. Just like on the internet, you know, the famous saying, in the internet, no one knows you're a dog, <laughs> from the cartoon from the 80s. Um, it, it essentially removes uh, personhood from the equation. Now, what that means is you can have autonomous systems that can control and manage money. One of the concepts that comes out of that is the concept of the distributed autonomous corporation, which is um, a construct, an autonomous system that owns resources, money, on the internet uh, through Bitcoin or some related technology, and then acts in the interests of shareholders who may be other autonomous systems or people, doesn't matter, and then can make decisions spend money and allocate resources in a completely autonomous manner. Let me give you a post-singularity example. It almost sounds like money for artificial intelligences. Imagine a, a weak AI system whose goal is to optimize publishing of content. And it can use a Bitcoin bank account to pay for hosting on, say, Amazon Elastic Cloud. Uh, which is one of the cloud computing services. It can now buy a month of hosting. During that month, it can then establish a number of blogs and publish news by harvesting it off the web. Then, 
it collects micropayments from the readers of those blogs. And if one of the new sites it builds is popular and successful, it collects more micropayments. If one of these sites becomes more successful than the others, it can spin off a copy of itself, a subsidiary that divests, that then goes out and launches more news based on that code pattern. And then it can buy more hosting capability to pay for the next month of its hosting and bandwidth. If it gets really successful, it can increase the amount of bandwidth it's paying. Mm -hmm. It could also, presumably, um, improve its own code simply by posting ads on forums to hire developers to write better code for itself. And then it can do A-B testing. Take two versions of the code written by two developers, put them out there, and whichever one succeeds in delivering the product or service it's delivering, collects more payments from its users and thrives, and the ones that don't essentially lose the ability to pay for their own hosting and they die. If you do that on a large enough scale, you now have an evolutionary environment for artificial intelligence which can manage its own resources. This is evolution in action. You could literally have a self-evolving autonomous system that can expand when it's successful and contract when it's failing and spawn new generations of itself that are self-improving. 